This week's word of the week is going to be shielded metal arc welding. So it's actually a phrase, not an actual word, but uh, we're just going to kind of go over in this video what is shielded metal arc welding. If you don't know, if you're just starting and you're hearing uh, stick welding or shielded metal arc welding, which is the proper term, uh, a lot, and you don't know what it is. You've never seen it before. You've never even heard of it, right? So this is a very introduction video on uh, uh, shielded metal arc welding. So if you're in the welding field, and on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 not being a big deal, 10 being a very big deal. If you don't know what shielded metal arc welding is, it's a 10. So uh, you definitely need to know what this is. Shielded metal arc welding, you kind of break down the, the uh, process just by the words, right? So you have shielded, so it's going to provide an atmosphere uh, around the weld so that the uh, regular air can't get in there and cause porosity. Metal just denotes the core of the electrode. Arc means there's an electric arc, and then you're welding, so you're joining two pieces of metal together or adding metal to an existing surface, right? And it's done by fusion, so it's actually mixing with the base metal. It's not like a glue where it's just uh, sticking something together. It's actually fusing it. It's mixing together with the base metal. That's why welding is so strong. So we're going to go over here to uh, also known as, so the American Welding Society, which basically governs all of welding, um, dictates shielded metal arc welding as the proper term for what is commonly referred to as stick welding. This is an improper term. The reason that they call it stick welding is because the electrodes right here are little sticks, I guess. So they're actually rods, but they, they commonly refer to as stick welding. That being said, um, almost everybody calls it stick welding. So. It's not, it's an improper term, but it's a really common term uh, in the welding world. Also known as shielded metal arc welding as SMAW, that's just the acronym for this. So you'll see SMAW a lot in the welding world because they don't want to have to write out shielded metal arc welding because it's a relatively long phrase, right? And then old timers will call it arc welding. A long time ago they would start out with oxy fuel welding. So you would get the torch and you would weld with the rod over here, but there's no arc, so it's oxy fuel welding. And then when you got past the oxy fuel welding, they would go into stick welding, or they would call it arc welding because there's an arc. Now, TIG has an arc, MIG has an arc, uh, all these other processes have arcs, but when somebody says arc welding, usually they're referring to stick welding. It's just an old, old term uh, that old timers used because they started with oxy fuel and then went to stick or arc welding. Uh, nowadays, um, oxy fuel welding is typically been replaced by TIG welding, so it's not really uh, done as much anymore. It's a it's a uh, process that's good to know in case you only have a torch set, but other than that, you're going to TIG weld it. So over here, I have the process. So what's up with the process? You got an electrode. We kind of went over that already. So this electrode, you're going to have this electrode right here. It's going to go into a positively charged clamp, which I'll show you a close-up of the electrode and the electrode going into the clamp in a minute. But um, So this electrode goes into a positively charged clamp. You have to scratch start this. It's a, it's a manual process. You have to actually drag it on the plate to get the arc to start. Once you start the arc, this gets eaten away as you're welding. That's the hardest thing to get used to as you're um, starting out in stick welding. Uh, direct current electrode positive. That's what you're going to switch on the machine. This is positive. The work is going to be negative. So the electricity is going to be flowing up into the electrode and eating away at it. Manual process. So the welder basically controls everything. There's different kinds of processes. There's manual, semi-automatic, machine, and automatic. This is a manual. The welder does everything. And then you see down here flux. On the outside of this electrode is a flux that melts down as it's going, and that's what pr provides your shielded portion of the name right here. So that's going to shield the actual weld. So you're going to scratch start it, then as you're going, there's going to be a flux that rolls over the top of this, which you, if you look over here, well, actually I got it on the next board, we'll see it in a second, but you got to chip away the slag when you're done. That's something that people um, don't do. I, I go out there and I see introduction people and they're welding over the top of the slag, even though I tell them not to, but you got to get rid of that slag. That's really bad. So, uh, applications, construction, any construction uh, application basically has a stick welder kicking around. Electricians, any of them, they have a stick welder kicking around that they'll use to tack up, I don't know, Unistrat, like things like that. 
a couple of examples that I thought of, ironworkers and steam fitters. So ironworkers put up high steel, right? So I-beams, things like that. That's typically going to be out in the field, and this is why construction workers use stick welding. In the field, stick does a lot better than the other processes, which we're going to go over here in a second under the advantages. So ironworkers, high steel, there's wind, they can blow away shielding gas for another process like MIG or a TIG, so they're going to use stick welding. Steam fitters, again, putting together steam lines, can be outside, can be dirty, things like that, they're going to stick weld it. Maintenance. Every maintenance garage in the world has a stick welder in the corner. Usually it's one of the old tombstone ones. You know, they use it for maintenance on whatever breaks. So uh, maintenance is a pretty big application for this. Uh, pipeline welder is a huge application, right? Pipeline welders are down in the ditch in the dirt, mud, and blood. And they're going to be using stick weld because if you had a MIG welding process down there, again, it's just too dirty to do. Shipbuilding, again, kind of out in the field. And then down here, I just got field repairs. Anything out in the field. Uh, you, you use stick welding for because it, usually it's dirty and stick welding is a very portable process which we're going to go over here in our advantages like I was just saying advantages portable right everybody's seen a truck go down the road with a welder in the back that's a stick welder right and that's usually a pipeliner or somebody going to a construction site but yeah they're very portable wind and contaminants it does very good with wind and contaminants the shielding, because uh, it goes over top of the weld in uh, actual flux or slag that you chip off afterwards, it, it can be done in wind and contaminants. So it'll burn through stuff too, that's what the contaminants are. So if it's wa if there's water on something or rust or uh, oil, this will burn through it, okay? High skill, I put that as an advantage and a disadvantage because the higher the skill it takes to do the process, the more money you're going to get. So if you're a stick welder well, by trade, you're going to get paid a lot of money because it's difficult to do. That's my advantage portion of it. All right, uh, cheap equipment. They're not real expensive. You know that being said, you buy an engine drive. Let's say it's uh, ten grand. People say ten grand is not cheap. Well, compared to a hundred thousand dollar CNC machine, it's cheap. So uh, cheap equipment. Uh, no shielding gas. Uh, the shielding gas that you get for welding comes in bottles. They're a hundred and I think seventy eight pounds a piece big ones so they're very heavy and they're very awkward and this is why welders get hernias all the time they're lifting those bottles with, with stick welding you don't need you don't need that um, shielding gas rod change you can change rods really quickly for materials so like that was a steel rod if I wanted to go to aluminum I just put a different rod in there change the polarity I'm welding aluminum uh, another thing with rod changes there's different diameters for thicknesses so if you're doing a thinner uh, plate, you're going to have a thinner rod. If you're doing a big plate, you can go get a big, bigger rod and fill it up quicker. So, good example of that, this is 8th inch 718, very common rod, alright? This is probably good for like quarter of an inch and up, maybe eighth, depending on if you turn it down and you're good. This is another rod. Huge rod, right? I don't even know how many amps this would take. It would take a huge amount of amps to run this. But this is a big rod. <laughs> I mean, you would have to have, I would guess, like a thousand amps to run that. So all you gotta do though, is switch it up in the in the clamp, and then you're going on to a different material or a different thickness. So that's why I put rod changes and advantages. Disadvantages, stub loss. Every time you throw one of them stubs out, you're throwing away money, right? So you wanna weld it right down to the very smallest stub you can get. Now you go to like a train or a training centers or whatever, and you'll see in the bin they're they're this long. It's just a waste of money. Stub loss is a waste of money. Well, so what we're getting at here is, as you're welding, it's going to eat the electrode down to about that big, and then you throw the stub out, which is essentially money. So stub loss, slag. You got to chip slag. So when you get done, you have to take a chipping hammer and you got to chip the slag, which takes time. So it decreases productivity. Skill high. Again, I had that as an advantage. This is the disadvantage part. If you have to have high skill, you got to increase training, right? So that's increased cost, and you got to pay more. So it's on both sides of the spectrum. It's an advantage and a disadvantage. Low productivity, like we were talking about, this is an overall slower process than like a MIG welding process. So the productivity goes down, so it's your cost goes up. High operator factor. What that means is when you're calculating the cost of a job. Uh, with stick welding, because you have that time off of taking the electrode out, putting a new electrode in, chipping of slag, 
it makes your operator factor go way up if you're actually like calculating if you're bidding something out. So it, it costs more. So that, that's a high op operator factor. Uh, thin materials, stick quality doesn't do that great on thin materials, but that being said, I've got electrodes out there that are 16th of an inch, so they are meant to do uh, thinner materials. So bring us back down, shield the metal arc welding. That's an introduction to the uh, process. Uh, what we'll do now is I'll, I'll get a uh, close-up of the electrode so you can see what the electrode looks like, and then we'll uh, do a close-up of the electrode going into the electrode holder, and then we'll uh, wrap this baby up. This is what an electrode looks like. It's 8th inch, 7018. 7018 is probably one of the most common electrodes used. The other two would probably be 6010, 6011, which are basically the same thing. But you want to put your electrode holder on the spot that's bare. So you can see right here there's a bare spot, so that's where you're going to put your electrode holder on it when you clamp it in. We'll check out the electrode holder now. This is just a quick shot of what a welding machine looks like. It's used for, actually this machine is used for both uh, stick and TIG. They're both constant current processes. Now if you look down there, you can see that that's pointed to a little positive sign. That's direct current electrode positive, so you're set up for stick welding. We'll take a look at the actual electrode holder now. This is the electrode holder. It just looks like a little clamp. So you're going to put the electrode in it, usually 90 degrees coming out of it. So there's the electrode holder with the electrode in it. See it comes out 90 degrees. There's little grooves in the electrode holder that allow you to go to different uh, angles. Most of the time you're at 90 degrees and then you just have to tap this on the actual work to get the arc to strike. So hopefully that clears up what shielded metal arc welding is as a process. Thanks for watching, subscribe to TV Weld, we'll see you next time.